The prediction scheme works as follows. One can now draw a line and simply count uh, the relative frequency of finding a wind speed higher than some threshold and then give this number as the relative probability to expect the wind gust in the next one or two seconds. So this predicted probability itself is not yet a, a real prediction because most decision makers want to have a yes-no answer. They want to be told there will be a wind gust or there will be no wind gust. Mm -hmm. And so we can now introduce a value for the probability a wind gust to occur to be overcome and when the probability which we find is higher than the threshold probability we would say there will be a wind gust and when the probability we find for the wind gust to come is below this threshold probability we would say there will be no wind gust. And this adjusts somehow the sensitivity of this prediction scheme. And <coughs> if we now make such a categorical forecast, yes, no, we can have we have two types of errors which are possible. Either we give an alarm, but there is no wind gust to come, so this would be called a false alarm or false positive. Or we can miss a wind gust which really comes because we say no, there will not be any. And uh, this is a false negative. There's other terminology for this same type of, of errors, of prediction errors. For instance, it's sometimes called specificity versus sensitivity. So we want to be sensitive to, to correctly predict when really something is happening. But we also want to be specific and not to predict a positive thing when nothing will happen in the future. And to quantify the success or the failure of such a prediction scheme, one usually uses what is called the receiver operating characteristics. So we see now this graphical way of, of looking at these errors in figure 3. And there we see some curves which are called the ROC curves. And on the, on the x-axis we report uh, the false alarm rate and false alarm rate means that the absolute number of false alarms issued by our prediction system is normalized to the number of non-events in our time series. So it ranges from 0 to 1. If we are highly sensitive, we would issue an alarm all the time and would make 100% of false alarms. And if we are extremely conservative, we would never make an alarm. And therefore, there are no false alarms. And on the vertical axis, we have the hit rate, and this is the number of hits divided by the number of events. If we are very sensitive, then we are able to make 100% of hits for every event we give a warning, but of course at the cost that we make correspondingly many false alarms. And if we are extremely conservative, we would never make and give an alarm and therefore have no hits. And now the usefulness of the prediction scheme depends on how how much faster the hit rate increases when we start to tune up the sensitivity than the false alarm rate increases. And the nice thing with this normalization is that if we had a completely stupid prediction scheme which randomly would issue, false, uh, would issue alarms, the hit rate and the false alarm rate were identical. And that would be the diagonal in this representation. And so a useful scheme has to overcome the diagonal in the full range of sensitivity, which indeed we see is a, the case for these uh, wind speed predictions with the scheme I explained before. So what is now tuning the sensitivity is this threshold probability. So as I said, we, with this embedding technique, for every situation we determine the probability of this particular situation leading to a gust, and if it's bigger, then some threshold probability we give an alarm. And when we put this threshold probability very, very small, very low, we produce many alarms. That's the upper right part of this ROC curve. When we put this threshold probability very high, we rarely produce an alarm, and that's um, the lower part, the lower left part of these ROC curves. And the different colors encode different types of gusts. Mm. So the targets, the events, are defined, of course, by a true increase of the wind speed. And we, we take 
targets, which are just one meter per second increase, two meter per second increase within this two second interval, up to more meters per second increase. Of course, the, the higher this gust value is, the less events we have. But it seems in this analysis that the, the bigger the, the target event, the better is the predictability mm -hmm. because the ROC curves are better, mm -hmm. more away from the diagonal when we are trying to predict the bigger gusts.